Hey guys, welcome back to the Bond Report. My name is Chris, AKA the Bearded Blofeld. That's right, we're continuing on with 007 Road to a Million. And today I have the two, the infamous, none other than the Bone Brothers. Gentlemen, welcome. Hi, Dad. Hi, Nisha. Give them a round of applause. I said give them a round of applause. That's better. So glad to have you here. You guys look great. Time to use that. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think we look anywhere near as sharp as you, I must say. I must say. Well, thank you very much. Flattery will get you everywhere, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it, it, it's so nice to see you guys kind of after the fact. Obviously, we saw you in the show. Very, um, very gritty elements you guys were put through. But I felt like even though they put you through some really tough times, they spoiled you guys at the end. And I know we can't give spoilers away. So if you haven't seen it, you're going to have to watch. But they definitely spoiled you guys at the end and kind of uh, made sure you were suited and booted. <laughs> Uh, I think I think we earned that with what we went through. Like he put us through the ringer from the get go, you know. So um, yeah, like I say, we're, when they get through to the final episodes, they, they'll understand. Hopefully, the, the guys watching will understand why we got what we got. Yeah, no, we uh, yeah we were definitely wearing the sort of clobber that we're not used to, mate. I must say, it was uh, yeah, so some pretty special gongs that we got to sport. Well, and, and the wild thing is, is uh, I did a little research, and for everybody at home. You may not know this, but these two right here were actually the only two contestants featured in all eight episodes. I didn't even know that. <laughs> I, yeah. no, I didn't know that either. I knew, I knew we had, um, I knew like there was a cut, obviously early on we, we were featured quite prominently and um, I guess in the latter episodes about giving too many spoilers away. But yeah, I, did, I didn't even, I did, didn't dawn on me, Joey. Did, did you realize that? No, I, did, I mean, we didn't realise that. It was uh, it all sort of rolled into one, you know, as, as, as we were filming. And, um, you know, you're just so concentrating on getting on to the next level and getting that question right and getting through the task that you're not even thinking about when it goes to an edit, you know? No, and, and that's where I was looking at it because I did dive in because I was like, man, these guys are just everywhere in this show. I felt like I, – and I felt like that's why it made you two – the contestants to really watch you guys pulled everything together now whether that was by design or that was just an editing you know ploy that they did you know in the editing room you guys really ended up being like the fan favorite from everyone i've talked to they're like man those bone brothers guys those are they're guys they're hilarious <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's glad, to, glad to hear that people like us, you know what I mean? We could just be in ourselves all the way through it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I guess, uh, obviously, and, you know, first and foremost, we, we've had a chance to meet all of the other contestants at the premiere and so forth, and we all that say, you know, it's, it's, it, it was, you know, it's a real pleasure to, to be involved in them as well. You know, they all did an amazing job. Um, I think, like, sort of Joey alludes to, I think, call it an advantage or whatever when it comes to being in front of a camera, the fact that we are brothers and we, we've kind of grown up together, it's almost right. like a second-hand, you know, yeah. like we, we finish each other's sentences without realising it. We'll probably do it on this call, do you know what I mean? And, and, and it, it's just one of those things where we're, we're, we're good mates, we're brothers, we, we've literally lived the same shared experience growing up. So, you know, that kind of banter and this, the, the sense of humour, it's, it's there already, do you know what I mean? And, and also the crew... The crew uh, are so good at their job. They're so professional that you forget they're there. So it literally is. It felt like myself and James were just on our own trying to get through these tasks and get to the end of these questions. So, you know, it, you zone out. So it is just me and James. I think also, like, a, an important thing that we all we both said to each other, like, from the beginning is, like, We've, if we can't enjoy this, then what are we doing here? Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, we, we've got we've got to make the most of it. Like, it's how many people around the world would, you know, would give anything to have a chance like this, you know? So first and foremost, we'll, we'll do our utmost best, but let's just, let's just enjoy the experience, man. Like, whatever will yeah. be, will be. Yeah, and I, and I think that really comes through in the the final product. That banter was there. Those experiences, you, you were, you know, camping out in one episode, and it was 
I could tell it was like, this is not the first time these two have done this. Like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure when you guys set up things like that, it was like, you already knew who was going to build the fire, who was going to do this, who was going to do that. Cause you guys have done it before, because that's just the natural course of your life. Now, guys, tell me a little bit about yourself and Joey, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Joey, I know that you're actually an electrician by trade. Is that correct? I am. Yeah. I'm an electrician by trade. Um, I've also got a license, black cab license, you know, for all London. So, um, but yeah, I did my apprenticeship with my dad. He had his own electrical company. So when I left school, I went straight into work many, many moons ago. And now I'm running my own business, which is uh, okay. Not so bad, not quite as enjoyable as, uh, you know, swimming through the Caribbean Sea or whatnot. But yeah, pays the bills. You know, it's wild. Um, I actually was going into the electrician apprenticeship here in the United States yeah, back yeah. when I was in my early 20s and I got about six, seven months through it. And I was like, you know what? I realized at that moment, it just wasn't for me. And then that brings me full circle because James, you are a musician and that's the direction I went. I was in a rock and roll band for 12 years touring and playing. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah. So I'm a drummer myself, but James, tell me about you. I mean, obviously, I know you do copyright and you've got a, a a budding music career going on. Tell us about that. No, I wish you lived a little bit closer to me. I'm, I'm, I need a drummer at the moment for the band. Uh, <laughs> I would definitely yeah. sit in, I promise. That's it. <laughs> I well, definitely maybe one day, well, I'll hold you to that. Um, yeah, man. So, I, I, you know, I kind of went a slightly different route to Joey, really. Like, I, 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 I think I worked a couple of days with our dad when I was at school on site, and I was like, this, I, this ain't for me. Like, you know what I mean? I, I wish I could do it, but I've always just been a little bit more of a book nerd and a music nerd and that sort of stuff. So I, I eventually um, I went, took myself to university. I did English Lit at university. Yeah, so got been a copywriter for sort of over 10 years now, working for myself as, as well. And, and um like, like Joey said, it, it pays the bills and it's something that I enjoy doing. But my true passion is music. The day I finished recording my debut album, just on the back end of COVID, was the day Joey and I got the call to say that we were going to be on this show. So it, it was bad. It's been a very crazy experience. Yeah, yeah, mad. Wow. Mad. I mean, you literally closed the door in one chapter and it was like, this huge door just swings open like hey by the way over here we're gonna need you yeah the app the album's been going well i've been touring a little bit of lately and i'm just recording my second album now so i'm so happy for you man and, and guys i'm gonna leave a link down in the description so if you want to check out james's music you can do that uh, I know he, I'm going to have links to all their socials as well. So if you want to follow them, I've actually been enjoying several of your, um, your like YouTube shorts or your reels on Instagram where you're performing Brand, some songs yeah. as well. So you guys are going to make sure you enjoy those. They, he, he sounds great. I got to tell you, he really does. His, his songs are a lot of fun and energetic. You guys, we're going to get into the questions here and I'm going to ask you a couple different questions. And then at the end, of course, we're going to save the end for the evil question. <laughs> <laughs> so with that let me go ahead and just get this out you guys may recognize one of these okay there we go <laughs> Let's see. you're not gonna send us down way crazy are you no 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 <laughs> okay so i've got the question here sorry about that <laughs> love that Talk to us about your time in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, you're up on Sugarloaf Mountain. Fans at home, you're going to recognize this location from where we see Jaws the second time up here in Moonraker. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you two had to climb literally up the face of a mountain. Yeah. yeah. And once you're there, now you're at the top of a mountain, then you had to get onto these cable cars Tell me what's going through your head. You're because my my favorite line, James, it came from you in this episode. And you're at the bottom of the mountain. You guys have got the gear on, and you're looking up and you're like, well, crack on. Here you goes nothing, mate. Crack on. I mean, you didn't even <laughs> think twice. You're just like, let's get it done. And I loved that. So tell me about that whole experience there. I, I think, you know, because you know at the end of or the top of that mountain, that's where you're going to get to your question to move on to the next level. You just push yourself on. We did it for every other level as well. So, yeah, yeah, we knew it was daunting. And 
it was going to take some doing, but it's literally, we're both there, we're bouncing off each other, we're in the support, and it's like, you're not turning back now, so let's just get going. But it was tough. It was tough. Yeah. And like, obviously, um, you know, there's only so much footage you can fit into the show, right? But that, that was on the back end of us coming directly from the Amazon. And it, it was, you know, it was basically the middle of summer there, wasn't it, Joe? Like, yeah. like yeah. yeah. So we, you, you, it was it was a sweaty old day anyway, but it is that thing of like, hey, you could, you just got, you've literally just got to crack on. Like, you know, they're, like, if someone's put in front of you, I think where Joey and I get on, it, it's like, We've, we've just got to give it a go. Like whatever will be, will be. But it's it's an enjoy, I don't say enjoyable experience, but it's something that we'll treasure forever. You know what I mean? Like it, it, yeah. It's, it's, it, and thankfully for us, it's 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 been captured on film. So it's lit. There's proof that we did it. And if, I mean, I make reference to it a few times in the show. It's like you know, I, I, could, I could be in a loft next Monday. I could be climbing under the floorboards tomorrow. You know, I'm back at work and. This beats it hands down. So yeah, it was a tough, tough old uh, task, but just plow on and get it done. And I saw a lot of the safety harnesses and everything in place for you guys to make sure, of course, that if you did slip, and there was a couple times we, they showed you slipping, but was there anything behind the scenes where it was like, you guys just needed like a solid 15, like, ooh, I need a break, like I'm burning out. We had a cut, like we had a couple of because obviously you get to, there's certain, like it's a straight cliff, but like any cliff, there's certain moments where like you know if you're if you're rock climbing in general, you can, you can there's stand. Up, you know what I mean? like yeah. That. So there's there's a couple of we had a couple of moments where we were able to like just like you know catch our breath and like the get get a little bit of strength back in our arms, I guess yeah. really, but, but not like, not too thing. much. That was really intense to watch because I'm also and I and I talked with. Uh, Beth and Jen about this in my other interview with them is I'm looking at you guys and I'm like, you guys have both hands free and you're, the struggle looks very real. What did the cameraman look like going up <laughs> with this rig on? And I mean, obviously there's drone shots, but how was that? Like, what did those guys look like? Mate, he earned his money that day, mate. He was amazing. He's like a mountain goat. Really yeah. just, just, just a complete and utter professional um, take my hat off to him, you know. And I mean, James has said it before on other bits and pieces that you know we're 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 feeling sorry for ourselves in pain and struggling. This guy's got kilogram upon kilogram gear on his back, mate. So you know what I mean. Like, pull yourself together, pull your socks <laughs> up, and just get on with it. So he's then, like motivating you. You're you're looking over at him like he's not going to outdo me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> More worrying, and he looked like he was enjoying himself. So it was, so it was one of them. Yeah, it was like, oh, we also, one of the moments talking about having all the harnesses on. One of the particularly disheartening moments. Remember, Joe, when that guy, like Brazilian guy, was just free climbing on his own. And yeah, he was just no, wheezing no, up nothing. and down. <laughs> he just went straight up past us. I was like, now that's dead. that's that's a serious climber. So In about four yeah. of the time. That was probably one of my favorite scenes throughout the entire show because when you when you get to the top, you can see the sheer exhaustion. You can really tell that you guys took the time to do what a lot of us forget to do from time to time, and that's you just stopped and just enjoyed the moment. You took in the view. You said, you know what, the the cable car is not going anywhere. We let's just sit here for and it was such a beautiful vista they showed. Oh, I man. think that was exhaustion kicking in that at the start. <laughs> we, yeah. we were about to pass out. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful scenery. Yeah, you're up you're up in the you're up in the gods there, man. Like you said, you know, the, the birds are literally flying in and around you. It's it was special. Uh, it was special. Okay, guys, so there's a lot of different 007 brands and references just kind of sprinkled throughout the show in general. Tell me, which one was your favorite that maybe you got to interact with or that you caught while you were out on one of the adventures? What did you see that maybe we at home missed? It was quite nice to wear the Amiga watch. Spoiler alert. Worth, worth a few quid. But I think the, the most, the clearest vignette, if you like, or something was when we were on that one and I went onto the cable car, obviously the Moonraker scene and stuff like that it was like that was the moment when it was like oh yeah this is like real 
Bond, luckily George weren't there too. Um, I think from the, there were little you know, sprinkles throughout, like in Scotland, like the Skyfall vibes and that that kind of stuff, you know, just... just All just the cars in the garage, wasn't it? Yeah, mm. definitely. And then, and then going into the bar in Jamaica as well, it was like, so like, like, such a, like yeah, yeah, like yeah. really, really, really cool. But re- really well done. Like we, we, you know, I don't know what the other contestants have said and stuff, but when you're in the midst, and I know obviously, you know, there's, listen, many of your fans, there's, there's huge Bond fanatics out there, as there should be, it's, you know, it's in, incredible movies, but... When you're in, when you're filming it, it's it, it's not front and center in your mind, obviously, because you know you're about to have to climb a mountain and stuff. So it's been really interesting to go back and watch it, watch the show, and and pick up things that we actually might have missed beforehand. You know? Yeah. Oh well, yeah, because it's it's coming from a completely different perspective at that point. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and I always wondered that too because, like with the girls, there was a scene where they walk in and obviously they unveil a very famous car from the series. And then when you guys walked into the garage, you there was definitely several cars there from the series. Yeah. Was it one of those things, where, as soon as you saw it, were you like, I know exactly what that is? We walked into that garage and, you know, we'd been on a hike through the Scottish Highlands. Um, long, long day. We'd also just, you know, been through the ringer with the question, the first question, and was... Although in the back of your head that you think, you know, your subconscious, you think they, they look familiar, but your main objective is to find that next question. So that's all we thought about. And then obviously the question isn't related to Bond. So right. it went out of my mind and we just had to concentrate on what the question was about. I think that's where this show, and I've said this before, is more digestible for just a general audience versus the hardcore Bond fans at home. And as much as we love finding Easter eggs as well, that this show's job is not to lure in fans of the franchise. That's already going to happen. It's to lure in new fans, new people. And I feel like it doesn't scare off the general audience. You know, they don't feel like they have to know all these tropes to be able to participate and enjoy the show themselves. Totally. I think the beauty of Bond is that when we watch Bond, but whatever whatever actor it might be, it's like we're we we secretly watching something that we wish who we wish we could be, but deep in uh, our hearts we know we know we can't be, right? I, I, whereas when people watch Joey and I like <laughs> struggling up a mountain or any of the other guys doing something like that, it's like, well, like uh, Maybe we could do that. Do you know what I mean? And that's where it comes back to what I was saying earlier is that you guys really sold it and you made it enjoyable for people that are in that demographic. Okay, guys. So here's an easy one. And this is just a fun one. I've been asking everybody. We'll start, Joey, with you. Yeah. Who is your favorite James Bond actor? Daniel Craig for me. Simply because I just think that in modern day, you know, our generation, my generation, it's more relatable to as a character. You know, he's got some trauma through the job that he does. You know, he's rugged. He's, you know, he's still the coolest dude on the planet, without a doubt, as was Sean Connery, Roger Moore. But to me, you know, it's, it's Daniel Craig, without a doubt. Love it. Yeah, and he's, he's definitely held the title longer than anybody now. Yeah. So he, he definitely did a great job in a lot of his films. So he's uh, he's on the top of my list. He's not my favorite, but we'll get there in a second. James, what about you, my friend? What is Who is your favorite Bond actor? Well, well growing up when I was young, uh, it was always Roger Moore because I, I just I just thought he's I, the comical aspect. I felt like he's the be- I, I thought he delivered in, in those kind of areas. But I, I have to agree. I think, it, you know, it's a, probably a common answer now. I think... Daniel Craig is taking it to a whole new level. And I, I, think, I think as great as all of the previous films have been, I think this new sort of generation, generational era of the Bond films with Daniel Craig at the helm, have, like it's, it's taking it to such a new level. It's, they're amazing films and the, the way he portrays the character is incredible, you know? Yeah, yeah. We, we've opened up that emotional side and that more human element that I feel like was in the novels. 
and that that was that was the key element. Now, whether or not you at home love every one of Daniel Craig's movies for what they are, we cannot argue the fact that he made the character much more human. So I, I love me some Daniel Craig, but to me personally, I gotta go OG. I I gotta go Sean Connery. He's my guy. Yeah, I mean, what a guy. What, what is it about Sean Connery that you um, that you love the most? Oh. Particular? I think it's the fact that he had such a suaveness about him. Yeah. But yeah. that he was also believable as a killer. Well, and that's yeah. that's the balance with Bond for me is like, do I think I mean obviously all of them are let's just be real, they're all pretty womanizing. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, they sure. all got Riz, they all got game. But it's whether or not I believe that not only you can be that suave and talk your way out of some situations and have that silver tongue, but also can you be dangerous? And if you can't, to me, you lose me. And that's where I fell off for a long time with Roger Moore because I didn't believe him yeah. as a killer. Yeah, yeah it's a good point. It's see where that comes. Like, see where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah, you might, you, you do make a very good point there. I must say. And now, and now for everyone, 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 it is time, time for, for the evil question. question. Gentlemen, if we can, tell me about a time during the show, and maybe there's multiple times during the show that you can tell me about, where maybe they pushed you in production and really put you in a situation to where you were without sleep, without food, without toiletries or a toothbrush. Like, tell us about those dark, dirty, nitty gritty secret moments that hit the cutting room floor. I mean, well, I think it, I think I mean I think you already have to look at us in the Amazon to see what was yeah. fairly evident. There weren't any toothbrushes in <laughs> there weren't no toilets in the Amazon, I tell you. Yeah, there definitely weren't no toilets around. So we <laughs> we made do with with what was in front of us. We went back to nature. Yeah, I would heard I've heard from a few other people that, you know, there were times where it was like, yeah, we got an hour of sleep on a train or yeah, we went like 24 hours without food or and so you know, is that did you guys have similar experiences with that with having to travel? The um I mean, I don't know, we don't want to do spoilers, but one of the the, the final scenes we were in, um we 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 hadn't had a lot of sleep, although it looked epic and it looked amazing and we were dressed very very well we had not had a lot of sleep that was a long 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 day so it's like by the time you got to that moment you're like this is great but that bed over there <laughs> that <laughs> almost looks better 100 <laughs> percent and we were just running on adrenaline yeah, literally, I was literally about to say that a lot of the time, you know, you know, you, you're running on adrenaline anyway, and it, you, you just sort of plow through. But of course, yeah, there were a few hairy moments, but it was the experience that drove us on, to be honest with you. Oh, guys, I really appreciate you coming on. Tell people how they can find you. James, let's start with you, sir. Uh, Brill, well, first of all, we've got our own official Bone Brothers Instagram set up now. So uh, at Bone brothers that's b-r-u-v-a-s that's the south london spelling of brothers and then you can get me on you can get me on at i am james bone so yeah my instagram handle is joey bone underscore well guys i really appreciate you being here today thanks for taking the time to speak with me do this and answer some questions for me it's been a lot of fun i really appreciate talking with you uh, if you guys would ever like to come back on the show, I would love to have you. But I won't take up too much more of your time. You guys enjoy your day. Everybody at home, thank you. Again, I'll have links down below for if you guys want to click and follow them and or possibly check out James's music as well. I recommend that heavily. He's got thank a you. great sound to him. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, we thoroughly enjoyed course. it. Yeah, no problem. All right, guys. Well, thanks for the support. And as always, Merry Christmas, 007. Yeah.